Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa atiullah ati rasulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself an abdukul ajis da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. InshaAllah. InshaAllah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, InshaAllah, Fa'awzu Billahi Min Shaitan Ali Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Raheem. InshaAllah, blessed month, the fifth lunar month InshaAllah and opening towards the sixth lunar month of Qamar and the shining moon but before we leave the fifth lunar month in Jaltiya and that Allah has subjected all of creation as a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad for Ayatul Kareem, uh, Haji Shahzad or Haji Shahid which one we have <coughs> A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa sakhar lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi jameea Minhu inna fi thalika la ayatin liqawmin yatafakkaroon Sadaqallahu al-aliyu al-azeem Sadaqallahu al-azeem, Barakat Rasulul Kareem, Ayatul Kareem is is this is the which, which number ayah, Shaykh, are we at? 45, number 13. Louder, please. 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 inshaAllah. InshaAllah, alhamdulillah, in, in this immense ayat al Quran on the realities of this fifth lunar month, there's like a big key that uh, Mawlana Shaykh would often recite and has an immense secret in this entire understanding and a great dalil and a proof in which all of what we're talking about, all of what is being uh, given as reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is that all of this creation is for Allah to be known, I'm a hidden treasure wanting to be known but doesn't want the, the creation because Allah might and izzat jalal is beyond anything that we can imagine, beyond the need to, to own anything and to claim its ownership. All of this is a gift for the king of his creation Sayyidina Muhammad as a means in which to be known and that's it. Allah is not in need of any ownership. Allah's kingdom and might is beyond comprehension and understanding. This is all a gift to show what Allah's generosity of a continuous gift to the soul and the reality of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad In Ayatul Kareem Allah is describing and, and He Allah has subjected to you that this is a dialogue between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. 
subjected to you. lakum. That as a king Allah must give his king, his sultan subjects and everything is that subject. Every creation, every, every creation on top of the creation means from its greatest of its planets and its stars to its smallest. From its ants, its treasures, its flowers, whatever is on that creation and whatever that creation is, He has subjected them to you from whatever is on earth and whatever in heavens. The throne, the arsh, the bayt al-mahmur, the Kaaba of the heavens, the malaika. When these people come and say, oh the, who, the awliya are for Allah is actually the awliya are creation. And anything created is subject to Sayyidina Muhammad because one being spoken to and one speaking. That Allah that He has subjected to you whatever is on earth and whatever is in the heavens. All from Him Allah Izzati Jamia wa minhu that whatever means the catch all for this contract jamia that we have subjected whatever on earth and whatever in the heaven jamia means that in its entirety in the contract mean in the entirety whatever you say it's in the jamia oh our angels jamia is the Kaaba jamia is the throne jamia Everything is the catch-all wa minhu and Allah clarifying from the Supreme Who, from the Supreme of Allah's unseen unknown reality that He's authorizing this authority that I have given all of whatever is in heavens, whatever is on the earth and whatever you can think of them or between them. How somebody will say the soul, whatever we say it's in that contract. All from him, indeed these are the signs for the people who tafakkarun. Again back to that where we described last week that Allah teaches these people of tafakkarun they're very few. Don't think it to be common knowledge and don't think what tafakkarun talk is something common. And as a result of its being uncommon when they talk people become disturbed. Their common phrase, I never heard that before and who cares? Who said that you're supposed to hear everything as if all knowledge passed through you? Means when Allah gave us None know it, none know it but those whom tafakkur. So means already started by 99.9% of the people are out of this subject and those 1%, less than 1% that contain and Allah grant them these realities, those are rare and precious. So don't think if you are enrolled in a rare and precious reality that everybody understands it, everybody knows it and everywhere you go if you repeat it everybody will say, oh yes this is true. Allah just said, none know it. So it means if those people speak when Allah describing them that none know it but these people of tafakkur and contemplation. Now Allah saying, even this authority and this Muhammadan haqqaiq, none know it except tafakkurun. So then this immensity, immensity, that's why Naqshbandiyatul Aliya, when you put in AI and ask, what is the reality of Naqshbandiyatul Aliya? What does it come back with? Even the jinn and the machine know. This is a tariqah built on the power of meditation and the realities of seeking meditation and the light within their heart. And that's what Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Qaddasullahu Siru was this supreme reality. Some taught reaching the reality by whirling, some taught 
reaching the reality by struggling and fighting. Some taught the reality by hadara and their movements. Naqshbandiyat al-'aliyah was based on tafakkur and Mawlana Shah Naqshband's depth of what he brought for this creation and the secret he brought for the Muhammadan kingdom of tafakkur. And as a result <coughs> as a result <coughs> of the way of tafakkur they were able to dive deep into the realities and the treasures hidden within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> More so than the shaykhs of Sama because they were teaching the haqqaiqs and the reality of how to enter into the heart. More so than the shaykhs of Hadra and Qadr and power. This was a gift that Allah gave Fardul Alam, Shahikul, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Qaddasullah Siru that the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, 7,000 years of Allah's years, his soul was created from this Muhammadan light before there was any wilayat and sainthood. That from that light when Allah wanted to bring into existence the reality of awliya that created the light of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Qaddasullah Siru for 7,000 years before any other saint created. If you understand light means that if that's the first of sainthood's lights then anything created after that is moving at a speed of light means it's a constant. Anything created 7,000 years after it would never catch up to it. It's 7,000 years ahead of the other one, right? Because light moves at a constant. If, if a light is like this or like this, it doesn't catch up to the other because the other one's also moving at a constant speed. As it's moving in a constant growth by Allah continuously bringing creation into existence, that one that 7,000 years in Allah's years precedes the creation of the other lights of awliya, that one is 7,000 years of Allah's years more advanced and will always eternally be more advanced because light is constant and no light can speed up and catch up to the other one. So it means the immensity of that reality and this is what Naqshbandi stands for. Naqshbandiya's realities was about tafakkur and to be a training facility for tafakkirun in which they were to come, they were to learn their disciplines, yes their adabs, their manners and that's the whole training. How can you have manners if someone doesn't know himself and he won't know his Lord? And that's what we gave you the secret of when they say they have taqwa. Because these, these Salafis are big, they're not Salaf because the Salaf are the holy companions. We call them Wahhab because they follow the crazy guy from the desert. But that group of people whom are extreme, they love to think they have taqwa, sort of self-righteousness. And anyone behind seven feet of steel that can't feel and cannot see and cannot sense anything how they can have a consciousness of Allah They're not even conscious of themselves, their breath and their existence. So that's… it's completely false. And the only one who can reach any sign of consciousness is the one who knows themselves. Because if he knows himself he'll know his Lord. And the before when he starts to meditate, before he can even consciously even say that I'm near to Allah he meditates and as a result of meditate he or she, doesn't matter the pronoun but we say he as in the form of rijal, when they meditate they realize, how I know Allah when I have all these bad desires, bad characteristics, angers, all of the trash within myself, how I could dare say that I'm near with this trash near to Allah and that's taqwa. That they realize, no my dirtiness has to be cleaned, 
my bad character has to be cleaned. All of these have to be destroyed. So then Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah was based on tafakkur. So means then this, this way is to come to the shaykhs and immediately learn how to make your tafakkur, how to make your contemplation, how to sit on a daily basis, make your accounting. As a result it opens up good manners. Because when somebody knows where they stand and begin to meditate, they try not to pass that limit. They're conscious of themselves, they start to become conscious of their incorrect behaviour and incorrect understandings. As a result they make their own line and they stand by it. But the one who never contemplates, never meditates, he thinks himself to be great and big and beyond this and beyond that and that's where the danger. That's why tariqah without it is completely wild horses. So there is no adab without tafakkur. The key to tafakkur and the key to adab was meditating, was teaching people, you're not a stallion, you're a donkey. You're not a steak, you have to be first hamburger. Means to bring the person down, to bring the nafs down, to tell the person to first identify all your issues before you try to judge other people, before you try to judge you know who, who's pious, who's not pious, who's righteous, not righteous, deal only with yourself. So how can anyone have adab if they don't make tafakkur? And that's why Naqshbandiya principles, but we went into that whole class and anyone wants to understand them, you Google or go to the Nur Muhammad website, go Google on our YouTube page 11 principles of Naqshbandiya Talaniya. It was a course curriculum for Naqshbandi shaykhs that you should be ta teaching these subjects so that the students can become self-aware. So means then our goal is to be tafakkirun. And if Allah allowing us to even hear this then you're enrolled. For if Allah does not allow you to even hear this word or hear this talk or hear this session, you're not enrolled in it. So those whom are hearing it, now what you're going to do with it? Allah holds you to an account that you heard that reality, you heard about tafakkarun, now seek it, now master it, now understand it. You have to live, eat, breathe, drink tafakkirun and the way of tafakkirun which is muraqabah. How to make contemplation, how to, to be self-aware, how to do an accounting of oneself. Otherwise how the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad can enter into somebody who doesn't know themselves? And that's the whole reality that we're trying to reach towards the reality of who knows himself will know his Lord. That holy hadith is the key to the whole way. When Prophet describes who knows himself will know his Lord. Arif al nafsuhu, Arif al rabbahu. If you begin to see yourself, see your faults, work on those faults, then you realize how much you're in need of help. So there's the ignorant. And there's ignorant of ignorance which is most dangerous of people. The one whom is ignorant says, I don't know and I'm, I think I got a lot of problems. Alhamdulillah there's a good stage. The one who says, I'm absolutely not ignorant at all and I don't know what you're talking about is the most dangerous because they don't even know that they have a sickness, how can they even attempt to begin to fix it? So the gift from Allah is the one whom is slightly self-aware and understands they have a sickness. Only then they can check into that clinic to begin to fix themselves. So who knows himself? They'll know their Lord, oh my Lord are all my vices, all my bad desires, all my bad characteristics, they are Lord supreme over me. That's my first fight. My fight is with my bad character, my bad desires. And that's when the shaykhs want to watch, that's when Prophet wants to watch, that's when Allah wants to watch, that is your jihad al-akbar. If you can fight that fight, Allah begins to send madad. 
when they see the servant is acknowledging their bad characteristics, writing at least their major bad characteristics and only then meditating to be conscious of those bad characteristics. Means then you have a taqwa because you see at night you, you say, okay I'll have anger, I'll have this jealousy, I'll have this bad character, I'll have this sort of hasad and envy and enmity and then you know exactly what are those triggers, how the next day can you repeat that without feeling ashamed? Because then you feel, oh now I'm a hypocrite, now I know I have these characteristics and every day I keep using those characteristics, that's where the great struggle begins means they begin to fight against it, they begin to cry for it, they begin to ask Allah for help, please I need help, I can't get rid of this, this characteristic, please Ya Rabbi help me. Only then Allah begins to open that when the servant is truly struggling, they're sincere in their struggle against themselves then this is the realities of the madad. That's why then the shaykh is also teaching the reality of madad. That there's no way you can fight this by yourself, that when you're going to sit and meditate and contemplate, read the madad for your shaykhs. If you're in pain, if you're suffering, if you have attacks, read your madad so that their support and their presence can be with you to protect you, to guide you, to inspire you. So all of this system is based on that key and this is a great key in this month that Allah want to dress towards the Divine, the Kingdom. Remember this is like a video game for our modern youth. Your final stage is hajj and you want to know is this the year in which your hajj is going to be accepted? Because hajj is an infinite cycle and circle. Not only the physical hajj, that's nice, that's entertaining and, and people spend lots of money and it's like tourism, but the spiritual hajj in which the, the victory is uh, defeating yourself and in every month Allah is giving these keys and gifts in this video game. If you take these keys and you begin to amass these gifts, the next month opens its realities. And one of the great realities of this month is Ayatul Kareem, سَخَرْ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ in which Allah is describing. That this entire kingdom of created and non-created, visual, non-visual, all of that we have subjected to you at every moment creation and every less than what we can understand is a fraction of a moment. How often Allah is bringing creation into existence? We can't even give a time to it because we don't understand Allah's speed. But if you think even just at a fraction of a second a new universe just came into existence, all of that subject to Sayyidina Muhammad An infinitely expanding kingdom of physical and non-physical realm. There's not a jinn, there's not an angel, there's not an ins, there's not any type of creation of what we know and what Allah describes that of the creations that you don't know, all of them is under the sultanat of Sayyidina Muhammad So then what is there to study? <sighs> Why study from this? Why study from that? Why to learn this? Why to learn that? Go straight to the king which this is his dominion Right? The Prophet is the treasure of Allah is the Khan He's described as the treasure. So if, if, if you want from the reality then seek Muhammadun Rasulullah these haqqaiqs and that's why Haqiqatul Muhammadiyyah is the highest. Allah is giving in this ayatul kareem, yes I know you love me, don't worry but you're never going to know me, don't be so bold. And that's why we don't try to claim that we're going towards the understanding of Allah How ridiculous that sounds when you really understand this ayatul kareem that what you're talking about Allah Allah has subjected the entirety of creation known and unknown to us because anything that comes into existence is creation. All of this has been given 
minhu from Allah to Prophet That's why then the tariqahs, they are the people of tafakkaroon. Allah describes them, none will know this except tafakkaroon, these people of contemplation because through their soul and through this awareness they gained the keys into this presence and they understood, they saw the witness. And they understand that the, the treasure trove of realities, they're all in the hands of Sayyidina Muhammad So why go to others when you should be going to the king? So that's the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and a great gift that Allah opens. And this is an opening before the holy month of Qamar begins to open which is the full moon. Why? Because if they truly understand and the student understands when they entered into the reality of 45 that when they're entering now into the reality of the moon, the moon represents those who know the kingdom. The shining moons of this nation they have to know who's the sun, S-U-N. Because mm? now they're celebrating the fake S-O-N. But whom is the, the light and representation of Allah and whom holds the keys to the kingdom. And that's the reality, that's the immense gift. Those whom hold that key, understood that key, understood the reality of Sakhalaqum ma fi samawati wa ma fi And that is from minhu, that is from Allah this authority not made up by people, as a result they are the key holders of this reality and Allah opened for them Qamarun that they are the full moons with all of the beating of the moon, all of the testing of the moon, all of the bombardment of the moon, as a result they know their course. The moon not shifting here and there, doesn't shift into a different orbit, the moon follows the course of the sun and plays the role it's supposed to play and that is to reflect the reality of the sun and take care of the inhabitants of the earth. Means those whom seek the knowledge they're of service and khidmat whether they're feeding people, giving water to people or feeding their souls with realities and with knowledges. They are the caretakers of humanity. You can't give what you don't have. So those whom seeking to have, they seek that light, they seek that love, they seek that reality as a result they reflect back towards creation from these lights, from these knowledges, from these realities, from their rizq, from their spirituality, from everything is a dress back down to creation and that becomes the role of the moon and the importance of why the moon has such an important light for all of earth, moonlight raises everything on earth, sunlight sweetens it. And that was in our talks of the rising sun. The immense reality between the sun and the moon and the earth, the earth represents people and humanity and creation. Moon represents guidance and the, those whom are guides and in the school of guidance. And the sun represents the eternal light in which we should all be moving towards eternal light and eternity and the sun should be the focus of our existence with symbolic of eternity. That you seek that which is eternal and not physical, physical fame is diminishing and fading away. And that's what we said, you know, <sighs> sorry, how many people hold the wealth of this world? Because everything is by reflection. Yeah, few people hold the entire wealth of this world. Means no matter what people think they have, the real wealth of it is held by a handful. And they play with everybody else. But we say everything's a reflection. So means then that less than 1% that hold and they falsely look like kings of this earth because they're the top point. But in reality they are the lowest point. And the people of tafakkarun 
they look like they're nobody because they sit, they meditate and contemplate. They are the reflective reality of those who are the highest custodians of wealth of the entire creation. Means this is the arch nemesis. Right? You look at the people of earth, they say, oh, how these few people control all this wealth? Well, because Allah wants you to know it's a reflection of the reality. The fewer hold the entire reality of this creation. If you think only few hold this physical, less hold the spiritual. So it's not something by mass but stores on a dark night. And that's why Allah gives, none know it, none know it, already starts by, nego- by negation. All the praising, none know it. These realities, none know it. These haqqaiqs and who, who, who ha- has the ownership of this kingdom, none know it. But the people of tafakkarun, they're the less than 1% in spirituality in which they have the keys to the kingdom. Just like the nemesis of the dunya which only a few control the entire wealth of this dunya, Allah is giving that reality for people of tafakkarun, none, none have it except the people whom sitting and contemplating, reaching to the realities as a result the knowledges they bring out are not common knowledges. And that's for the students to understand the preciousness. When they understand how precious it is then safeguard it and Allah holds you to account that what you did with it. That's why they're inspiring people, share it. This knowledge if you don't know what it's worth, share it. Put it out on social media, put it out here, put it out there. People say, see we can't support like we can like big people, we can't give like this, we can't give like that, I can't even go out and give food or whatever your excuse is. You can't come back and Allah knows that you can't come back and say, I didn't have a finger. So Shaykh, okay I don't even have a finger, then get a stick, put it in your mouth and go like this with the keyboard. There's no way that you can't contribute your time to spread this haqqaiq and this reality. And as a result of spreading these realities, the immensity of this this reality how it dresses the souls of people. Because now you're seeing the change, you're seeing all these different people and different religious people start speaking about these things and portals and energies and Sayyidina Muhammad even saw one of the, the, the Wahhabi ones wearing a turban and speaking a different way. So all is great. You don't have to know who's being affected by it, all we have to know that in a world of increasing darkness you're taking a match and throwing it. Keep throwing light into the darkness, keep throwing light into the darkness and the immensity of that action itself saves us, our families from despair and difficulty. Because Allah holds everyone to account that you saw the darkness coming, what did you do? So nothing, absolutely nothing. So then now why are you, you, you're in a bad shape, why are you upset? You did nothing, then live with nothing, the darkness overtook and you're now under the oppression of that darkness. But the reverse can be said that, Ya Rabbi I saw the darkness and I did my best to spread the light, spread hope and spread the good word. And as a result of that action, Ya Rabbi I did the best, you didn't give me you know tens of thousands of microphones to send it out, I did the best with what you gave to me as a means of that action Ya Rabbi save me and make a difficulty to be lessened for me, let the oppression not to be affected upon me. So all of this hikmah and immense wisdom in these last days to do these things, to do these actions, to, to be productive, to be in a way of service and khidmat and, and these realities, to be dressed from these realities. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.